Okay, recording here Thursday morning. Outside we have a Northeaster that must have hit snooze about a half dozen times because that is the only explanation for why we're here on April 4th, coated with frozen rain and snow. But inside it is toasty warm, three weeks away from the NFL draft. And as we continue to lay tracks for the hype train headed towards the draft, we welcome in Fitzy and WEI's Mike Cadlick for the show, both of the Six Rings and Football Things podcast, along with Andy Hart, who will join this show once IT can figure out how to fit his head into the shot. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I, did. I like it. Shots fired early. Heart catching strays. I love it. It's tough. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a seven podcast. and three quarters up top. Not quite custom fit. Not like Kevin Mensch, old Texas Ranger, size eight, size eight hat. Uh, but every once in a while, my wife remembers that and then has second thoughts about having kids with me. So we'll see where that goes. But enough about things that might get me in trouble. A um, few things off the top. Nice and then we'll get to the goods with these, these fine gentlemen here. Uh, this latest episode brought to you by Prize Picks. We have a Patriots mock draft, snake draft. I will explain what that is in a second. First off the top, we have a terrific male fan segment at the end of this episode with Gary Langley of Culver City, California, for those of you who don't know. Male fan is just mailbag, except for you made a donation to Boston Children's Hospital, and you came on the show for 10 minutes. Gary was great. He has a special offer for you if you like Maine vacation houses and listen to this podcast. So stay tuned at the end for this. Uh, second thing, shout out to my guy, Stefan, loyal listener. Saw him at the Garden last night as I was helping cover Celtics Thunder for the Herald. He stopped me to say hello. Very nice guy. Stefan, my guy. Speaking of the Thunder, fellas, um, I tweeted this quote out last night, and I, I have to assume you both took this as a direct personal attack to your to your family name, the company name, because mm-hmm. Thunder coach and Lemonster native, Mark Dagnall, from a seated position, dunked over all of us. In Boston sports media saying, quote, I know how you guys are because we used to go to Red Sox games. Dagnall's like 39. And we listened to WEI afterward. And it's just a bloodbath. Jesus. It's one out of 162. Relax. End quote. Um, Fellas, are you going to take that standing up, sitting down? What's going to happen? Well, I take that with a historical grain of salt because I think what he's referencing is being a kid in the car on the way to the Sox game with his dad pre 2000 poor pre pre reverse of the curse prime evil empire versus the good guys of Red Sox nation. And it was a bloodbath every night. We lived and died by each and every Shaughnessy column box score and big show with Glenn Ordway. Since then softness, complacency and four championships in 20 years has obviously eased the burden upon the back of Red Sox nation. And dare I say, uh, softened the efforts made by uh, team parameters known as Henry and the Fenway Sports Group. So I, I and feel he him 100%. He's completely correct, too. I mean, I, I take it sitting down, sitting up, however you want to say it. But, I mean, that's what we do here, right? That's why we're that's why we're on this pod. That's why we're going to go do this mock draft. We we make mountains out of molehills on just about everything, just like we will with the Patriots coming draft. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I thought I, that, was, that was a good quote. It's a great quote. And wouldn't you guys both agree that it's the Patriots who get it much more and much harder now than the, the Red Sox do like the Sox. We, we forgive a little bit because of, you know, we know there's an issue with ownership and yeah, they haven't won a lot. And I know the Pats have won a lot, but it feels like the expectations for the Patriots are that much higher. Even now with rookie coach, new general manager slash director of scouting and everything else. I'd say there's more apathy towards the Sox. The the Pats are just perpetual anger, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, playoff season with a rookie quarterback. You go 8-9. No, nah, okay, Matt Patricia was the issue. He's out the window. Oh, 4-13. Oh, and there's a new head coach who, you know, is, is learning on the fly with the media. And the crafts are now under fire constantly. Um, that's a separate issue. But as far as bloodbaths and Mark Dagnall go, 135 to 100, my friend. That was the Celtics over his thunder last night. And thus concludes our Mark Dagnall segment. Okay. On to the goods, because I gave you guys some homework, which, you know, Fitzy by now knows better, because that is just part of the deal of coming on the Pats Interference podcast, is you're going to have work to do before you come on here. Mm-hmm. And the Patriots mock draft snake draft will work like this. Myself, Cadillac, and Fitzy will take turns making selections for the Patriots at number three, number 34, number 68, and number 104 overall. Those are their picks in the first, second, and third, and fourth round. At each pick, We will either be able to select a player, trade up, or trade down. However, if you are going second or third in this particular round, say the first round, and Cadillac goes first, and he takes Drake May, and it's my turn, I can't take Drake May. I need to take somebody else, trade up, or trade down. Then the last person who goes, in this instance, Fitzy, will make the third selection at number three, and this is the snake part of the draft, will then lead us off by making the first move 
in the second round. And then we'll go back to me and then to Catholic to finish the second round. There is one catch, however. If, let's say, I want to build this big, fancy trade at number three where the Patriots go up or they go down, and Catholic and Fitzy, being the opposing GM in this scenario, go, that trade sucks. I can't make it. I have to make a pick instead. They have veto power, and that uh, spices up our Patriots mock draft, snake draft. You do not have to make trades. We can take players or do whatever we want. The point of this exercise, A, is because it's fun and it's gimmicky, and look, it's early April, silly season. But secondarily, it's to lay out maximum options for the Patriots at all of these picks as we see it right now. Again, three weeks away from the draft. What are their best options? If option A is off the table, what's option B? And then option C. Fellas, are you ready? Born ready, Good. baby. Good. Well, Catholic better be ready because he's going first. Oh, so boy. the Patriots are up at number three overall. You have every player that is a reasonable expect, uh, expectation to go at this pick. We are using the consensus board at NFL mockdraftdatabase.com. And if you're building a trade, shout out our friend Rich Hill and his modern trade value chart. So you have the third pick, all options on the table reasonably. What are you doing at number three, Mike Catholic? I have, without question, the easiest pick of the entire draft. First, first overall, no one uh, jumping down my throat for trades because we just stick and we pick Drake May from the University of North Carolina. He fits what they want to do on offense with Alex Van Pelt's system. Uh, he's not smaller scrawny like Jaden Daniels is so he doesn't have to worry about the weather he comes in and uh maybe some growing pains behind Jacoby Brissett but uh that's the pick it's Drake May I think it's a slam dunk I think uh I would take him at number two I would maybe even consider if I'm the Patriots taking him at number one I think he's that good of a prospect so give me Drake May UNC uh sign sealed delivered bring him home so you're saying the Bears need to send Keenan Allen back to like Chapel Hill to go hang out with him for like an afternoon check him out. Is that, is that what exactly. we're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What's it, what's it, what's our, cause I think this is now almost becoming an inevitability the same way Caleb Williams to the bears is an inevitability. He takes one, one visit, has dinner in Chicago, goes home. That's that. Um, what, so we have to start getting behind this. Like he's probably going to wear 10. So that means our Mac Jones jerseys and Garoppolo's can get taped over recycled, reused, et cetera. What, what's going to be, what are we gonna call? What are we gonna call him, Callahan? You have to have a lot of catchy headlines. We obviously have to have Nito nicknames for the radio, for the blog, and the socials as well. Are we going Drake the Snake? Is it the Matriot? Is it May Day? Uh, come See, what may. What I brought to the table today, Fitzy, was the whole gimmick, the whole idea of the snake draft mock draft. So I'm just gonna take the rest of today off. I, I don't have anything for you in this way, but I I, I like the Matriot. I've seen you use that before. The mm -hmm. first thought that I had, because again, I, I age. I feel like twice as fast as everyone else at this point is the love the Drake, hate the Drake line from all of those Seinfeld episodes. Um, right. So I, I just want to love the Drake. I want everyone to love the Drake. If he ends up becoming the pick, it still could very well be Jaden Daniels. So Adam Schefter uh, apparently on his podcast yesterday said, it looks like Jaden Daniels signs are pointing to Daniels at two and Drake may possibly at three. So I don't know. I feel like we got time. Yeah. Here's the other one that uh, me and me and Andy Hart threw out yesterday on the, on the six rings of football things. Uh, the maniacs are like his fan club, the fan base. So uh, like the uh, mm. when you have the banner in the corner of the end zone that's hanging down, it's like these are the maniacs or something. So that that's another one to keep in mind as we as we inch closer to draft day. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. I like it. That's pretty good. Well, you can't right, get enough of them. You're going to steal all these for the back page of the Herald too. You know, yeah. he gets absolutely drubbed like seven sacks against the Jets. It'll be like Patty Drake. Yeah, <laughs> Patriots rookie <laughs> pounded into submission as Jets loot as Jets thrive. I get it. Can't, can't have any of that, though. Um, <laughs> are you sad also to be done with the era where every single Jets game for the last five, six years was just, oh, they haven't won. The Jets have not beaten the Patriots since Obama was in office. In December 2015 was the last Jets win over the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And now that era is ended because of some snowy mishap of a football game that happened in January. I, I really wasn't even a football game. It, it wasn't. It was such a... Such a sad end to both the season. Well, that season couldn't end quickly enough in the Belichick era as well. But And that's why I've been banging the drum that should Bill Belichick accept the invitation from the Patriots and show up at 6-12-24 for Tom Brady Hall of Fame Day. Uh, he will get the, the do, the adulation, and the love, and the five-minute standing ovation he so richly and roundly deserved, but obviously couldn't get in the diagonal snow of that craptacular end to a shitty season.
Uh, yeah, if we couldn't complicate Brady and Belichick's relationship anymore. Hey, Bill, please crash this one day we've carved out for Tom and get just as loud of an applause. How do you feel about that? <laughs> okay, so I know we talk a lot about the draft in this podcast. It's a football podcast. It's a Patriots podcast. What else are we going to do until April 25th? Well, let me tell you, soon enough, we are going to turn our attention to the Celtics and Bruins because they're getting in on the playoff action. And so can you with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where right now you can win up to 100 times your money with as few as four correct picks with basketball, hockey, and other sports on Prize Picks. And I'll tell you, look, I like Prize Picks for baseball too. The Red Sox just started up, they're playing the Mariners, the A's. I put a little money down and I got a lot more money back. So download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. I did the same. Again, download the app today. Use code CLNS at Price Picks for a first deposit match up to $100, and you can do the same. Basketball, hockey, and baseball. We got a lot to do until the draft, and you can find it all at Price Picks. Moving on to the future, the right. mock draft. Drake May is quote unquote off the table. The Patriots still picking at three. Their plan B, in your eyes, Fitzy, is what? Oh, boy. I can't wait. The best part is right now, I can't hear the jeers, sneers, boos, uh, and and anger that would come with what I'm about to do. But, uh, oh, looks like the card is in. And the New England Patriots will be trading back from third overall, accepting an offer from the Minnesota Vikings, who stole all the way up to number three to take their quarterback of the future to work with Kevin O'Connell and Josh McCown. I, as GM of the Patriots now, accept 11-23 Minnesota's first round pick in 2025, believing that to be commensurate value for the pick. You guys know I am in it for the long game as well. I still think there's a way that you can build the team to be competitive and entertaining this year and also add prospects and blue chips to build this team to be competitive for the next five and 10 years. So I'm trading back to 11 and 23 and with the 11th overall pick in the 2024 NFL first round I take out of you ready for this Penn State give me Olu Fashanu offense tackle because you know what I'm going Harbaugh style baby you win big games with big men in big trenches that's inspiring. Uh, and how how much did that quote move you? You're like, have I just been watching football wrong the whole time that I've been watching the ball as opposed to all of the giant men on the line being like, if they're good, nothing else matters because everyone's relying on them and they're relying on no one when he said that at the owners meetings two weeks ago. Right. I, it was just, it was, it was, it was outstanding. I, he's such a weirdo. I love it. I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely love it. I mean, he's going to go chalk. He's going to take a tackle. He's going to take Blake Corum. He's going to take Zach Zinter. He's going to rebuild Michigan in Los Angeles. And they're going to be, they will be a tough out in every game. And if the Patriots are going to build toughness and they're going to have depth, we, we all agree. I believe that the Patriots need to, in some order, get a quarterback, a wide receiver, one and a left tackle. And I believe that by pick 34, the new England Patriots can achieve all three of those things and not just grab gimmicks or desperate reaches. So as to appease fan base and ownership, that need all three. Okay. Very and as good. much as so, I wanted, as much as I wanted to play the stingy general manager in this situation, that was going to be my trade. If I didn't get Drake may uh, to a T 11, 23 in the 2025 fifth. So, mm -hmm. uh, or the 2025 first rather. So I am, uh, I'm all for it. I think that's the perfect compensation too. All right. So I disagree vehemently with both of you, <laughs> which okay. is why I see this trade a lot because it's, you know, Minnesota's got two first round picks. They seem like they're moving up for a quarterback. There's just this natural progression to where could they go to get a quarterback number three. And I look at this and go, I'm not, you know, because basically you're, you're not getting three first round picks. It's two first round picks, one of which will be late in this round. And then another will be TBD next year. You're moving back eight spots in this scenario. Understanding what the Cardinals gave up to move up nine spots, or excuse me, the Texans did with the Cardinals from 12 to three last year, not for a quarterback. But for Will mm -hmm. Anderson, getting a second, a first, a future third, I, I need more. Because this is for a quarterback. This is where the drop-off is, unless you're in love with J.J. McCarthy. So I had a trade ready to go. But as we just detailed at the start, because I now pick third, I cannot take Drake May. And I cannot trade back because these are the options, as we've laid out, that have already mm -hmm. been taken in the first round of this mock draft snake draft. What I can do is either pick a player at number three, which Jane Daniels feels like a cop-out. I'm not going to do that. Or I can trade up. And to be clear, if I was going to trade back, I had this deal outlined. 
from three to six with the Giants, mm-hmm. I get a future first round pick because I know what you're mm-hmm. coming up for. You're watching your hands at Danny Dimes. You're cashing yep. them and you're trying to find uh, Drake the dollar to get him at number three. I want your second round pick this year and a fourth round pick. So a future first, a second, and a fourth. And instead, I'm going to move up, fellas. I'm calling oh, Wow. And I'm getting Jaden Daniels, which, again, to be clear, if you were trying to follow this in a traditional, sensical way, you're going to hate the rest of the episode because the point of this <laughs> is not to have an actual mock draft. Wait, yes, we all have abject mock draft fatigue at this point. Like, I can't think of any more of these iterate. Like, I'd love to move with the Giants. Maybe trade back with the Vikings. Maybe pick yeah. third overall. Maybe trade up to the first overall. Like, it's... Because you know why, Andrew? We've been all doing the same column, blog, podcast, and radio show since freaking November because the team yep. sucked so bad last year. And there's still almost a month till the day. It's It does oh, get exhausting. Shit. And that's why this is super fun. So, yeah, go for it. Go trade up. Okay. So, again, off the table, Drake May. I cannot take Drake May. I cannot trade back, even if I really like my deal with the Giants, which is as much as I can get similar compensation, not drop back that far, but still get a Malik Neighbors, Roma Junze, or Joe all in addition to the three, maybe four quarterbacks that go, because I think those guys are, mm-hmm. are elite blue chip top tier players. And I like Olu, don't get me wrong, Fitzy, but right. like that's the sweet spot. Still get a player yep. deserving of the top five, top 10, and add a bunch of extra draft capital. But in this instance, mm-hmm. I can't do that. So I move up to Washington and I give them a third and I give them a future fourth. And I say, here you go. You clearly like Drake May and Jane Daniels because we're on the phone. I like one more than the other. In this instance, it's Jane Daniels, who I have said I like Drake May more. But this is a guy who I spoke with an executive this week who just says, look, we talk about the speed. We time the speed. Mm -hmm. It is terrifying on the field. That is a baked-in plan B for any play that goes wrong. The issue, of course, is the Patriots need to protect him, but we have more picks. We have more decisions. Uh, It seemed like there were shock that set in when when I move up to Washington here. Any other further thoughts before we go to round two? No, I just uh, the one thing uh, the one I don't wonder about the whole like oh this guy like he he runs into too many sacks he he takes such hard hits like he was playing a college game he's gonna understand that a he is the asset for whatever franchise takes him and b you can't you can't rg three yourself into oblivion and miss out on that second deal it's like the tragedy of Mac Jones for getting mishandled and for rg three for just getting ab- used and abused and put away wet and broken like. I, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna be terrific. If between the two, I think I've grown to like Drake May a little bit more over Jaden Daniels, but make no mistake, if the simulation and the settings are perfect, Jaden Daniels can F some S up real good. He's a he's yeah, a, I, I mean, you don't you don't get 50 touchdowns in the SEC by accident. I feel like Jaden Daniels is all of a sudden getting like the short end of the stick here where everyone loved him and we fell in love with him because it felt like he was gonna be a patriot. And then all of a sudden it turned to Drake May, so everyone loves May more, and then now we're going to end up with Daniels and people are going to be disappointed where he's a really good football player. Like This is a this is a three-quarterback class uh, at mm-hmm. the top. So realistically, the Patriots are in a pretty good spot uh, at three. So yeah, I like trading up for Daniels just as much as I like taking May. Yeah, he, he's exceptionally accurate. He layers the ball to all levels of the field. Mm-hmm. You know, I mentioned the speed because it's obvious, but I think it just deserves reiterating. Like he, He's a guy who's run a pro-style offense, plenty of reps in there, just needs to protect himself. All right. And, and learn to yep. extend plays rather than just throw or scramble, which was his MO at LSU, where he only happened to win the Heisman Trophy. And as you said, Fitzy scored 50 touchdowns. So still right. an excellent prospect. It feels like nationally, everyone has fallen off on Drake May. Locally, the love for him has grown and it's been flipped for Jaden Nanos. I just don't mm-hmm. want folks listening to this podcast to forget he's freaking outstanding. And that's probably why he's going to go mm-hmm. number two. But in this instance, he goes number two and he's a New England Patriot. All right. At number 34, I'm going to keep this simple. Lad McConkey comes straight on down. Um, he is six foot. He is fast. He is quick. He is sure-handed. You're not going to get the number one here, but as far as the best players available, look, I think he's right up there. I considered an offensive tackle. Talked a lot about Jordan Morgan's supposedly short arms uh, earlier this week with Doug Kite. I'm getting the receiver. He's not going to be Edelman. He's not going to be Welker. He doesn't even have the same playing style, but – he will sell out his jersey because folks will think that before they see him in training camp. <laughs> and his name is freaking Lad McConkey. So yeah, but- it's a McConkey. Yeah. If you know football, you know McConkey is legacy. I don't even know what his relation to Phil McConkey is. It doesn't matter. Phil McConkey had A, one of the greatest names of all time, and B, one of the five greatest mustaches in the history of the NFL as well. And there's Giants to Patriots to Belichick legacy there. Every time I hear his name, I just, uh, I always like, ah, that's me boy, Lad McConkey. I just want him. I do. I just love the way he plays. He could like he just he's quick, he's strong. I, I 
I, I, I've watched the game tape, uh, like the tape don't lie. And whenever I saw at the underwear Olympics, when I saw him at the combine do that, I don't know what the name of that drill is guys, where like you, you catch it, you catch, you turn, you catch it on the sidelines. And then the receivers run across the field and they have to look yeah, both ways. Yeah. yeah gauntlet, he, yeah. he ran it like he was like, like, like he was in traction. Like he, like he moved, like he's actually like on skates, like he was on rails. The dude is so fluid, so quick. I think any team he goes to, and I don't think he's going to be there at 34 Callahan. I, I don't think he makes it past 32 at the chiefs because his rookie season, he could possibly catch 110 balls for the chiefs. Um, He may go to Buffalo early because now that Buffalo is in the wide receiver market. And that's one of the the fallouts of the Steph Diggs trade. Like, oh, good. We don't have to worry about facing Steph Diggs twice a year. Like, yeah, well, now Buffalo is also either going to take McConkey or Adonai Mitchell or whoever else the Patriots may have their eyes on for a wide receiver well before you guys get there. So just one of those little ancillary yeah, details at this to the big point, Steph Diggs deal. No, with the you're right with the Diggs deal. There could be 10 receivers now that go in the first round. Um but I love McConkey too. I think I, I wrote something for this morning, actually, for WEI.com about how the Patriots need to go get a number one wide receiver because of what they've had in the past. Like it's been it's been so bad and so average. Like there was something with their yards of separation last season where like they were in the three of three of their receivers were in the bottom five in in a given week. And it's like Lad McConkey immediately gets off the ball. Quick separator. Like he's just a stud. And you're right, Callahan, too. He's not just a shifty slot guy. He can play on the outside. He can get down the field. Like he does it all. And he is going to be a very good player. And I'm with Fitzy. I don't think he probably will be there at 34. But since it's your podcast, I guess we can give it to you that, you know, he's going to be there. So, well, and, and a couple of things on Lamb because I think it deserves just driving home. And then we'll get to Fitzy's pick. Um, is he's a legit six foot. This is not all of mm-hmm. the guys that like my, my girlfriends swipe and see six foot and go he's at least five ten at best like he's not rounding up here we all measured him saw him measuring at the nfl comment that's what he is secondarily he has at times when you watch him work against zone coverage have the field mapped out in his head as he's mm-hmm. running over the middle where he'll catch a ball on kind of a, an over route and stop uh, or a hook and then understand i need to turn the other way because the hook defender or the single high safety is closing down on me coming from a certain angle, and I'm going to pull away from him. Like, this is in the process before he stops, makes a catch, and turns away. That's the stuff that gets you not only just a fast start in year one, but sustains your career because you're avoiding injury and you understand, you know, I have all these tools, but where, which one do I need to use now? Now, granted, mm-hmm. he was injured a fair amount at Georgia, and that, that's, that's a real issue. But I think those are things that the Patriots can kind of massage a bit, uh, as they have with other players, even recently during these terrible seasons. All right, so – uh, Lab McConkey is off the board. You could trade up. You can trade down. You can take any other player. What are you doing at number 34 for the Patriots? Uh, do I get to also make pick 23 as well? Oh, yes. Yes, please do. Excellent. All right. I got a double picker here. All right. So with pick 23 in the first round, which I received in my trade with the Minnesota Vikings, three first round picks in exchange for three, pick three overall. Fare thee well and good luck, Drake May in Minnesota as you skull on your way to fourth place in the NFC North next season. I am taking... Somebody that it seems like I am the only big believer in at WEEI. I can't believe I'm in lockstep with, of all people, Michael Felger on this one. I know we, we, the diametrically opposed opposites of Boston sports media, but I love him (laughs) for that. And he's great at what he does. No hate, all love and celebration here. Uh, 23rd overall, making Mike on Wenu your most important tackle on the New England Patriots putting a core for back at the right tackle spot for the time being. And we'll see what we do with Ola Fashano in the future to come. Give me Michael Penix jr. Out of wow. the university of Washington. I sorry guys. Like, like I've Stroud showed us in the college football semifinal last year that he could ball out and we should have believed it. And in the college football semifinal this year, even if it was a big 12 defense, you don't throw for 70% completion, 430 yards and two touchdowns and also scamper for a bunch as well lighting up the scoreboard with three potential first or second round wide receivers to come with Jalen Polk, McMillan, obviously in Roma Dunze by accident. This guy can, sp- he, the medicals have checked out four, five 40 at his pro day can throw it over the mountains, 37 inch vertical. And he's just an at, he's an athlete. And I, yeah, he needs to learn some touch. Yes. Obviously it's a risk. The last time the Patriots took someone with two ACLs, it was Dominique easily. And we saw the way that that went with him and his dogs. Uh, I like I've been a fan for a long time and I again I'm stacking value and I think this kid can play in the NFL. K 
Catholic? Yeah, I I mean, I think at this point, I wonder if he's even there at 23. I'm a fan too. And I saw there was a rap sheet report today that said he could go in the first half of the first round. Um, and really, right now, the only knock, like you mentioned, Fitzy, is the injuries. Like, he does it all. He's He has a rocket arm. He's incredibly accurate. He showed off the speed. Um, and I look at him too as my call it, I mean, fifth quarterback, but really it's, it's such an important position that these guys can go all five. We saw Mac Jones be the fifth quarterback at number 15. Right. And so I like the Penix pick. Um, I could see it at 23. I could also see it at 34 if they get there. Uh, and if I didn't take Drake may already, he was going to be, uh, on the board for me at 34. So uh, and, I and, like it too. He's a really good player. And Callahan, I want to, let me just add that if, you know, if Elliot Wolf and, uh, Highsmith and everyone are getting intel that maybe that maybe just maybe uh, he could be gone by the middle of the first round, then I would be completely comfortable flip-flopping these picks. I would yeah. take Penix at 11 and then I'd be okay with like Amarius Mims or uh, Guyton out of uh, out of Oklahoma at 23. Either way, Fitzy, I'm what about your guy Bo Nix? Bo Nix at 11? You didn't think you didn't want to take Bo yeah, Nix at 11, I, huh? I, I, That's no, your boy. I, no, that now he's my boy. If we choose the chaos theory and we go Marvin Harrison Jr. three and Bo Nix at thirty four, that's the Keith okay. plan. Okay. So Penix, look, you're right. Absolutely showed out in the semifinal against Texas. There's a huge difference though between that Texas defense and what Georgia had when CJ Stroud sure. almost knocked them off uh, the year before. Sure. And I think as a player, there's issues a little bit with the the delivery. Um, even though he wasn't injured at Washington, he still got a slighter frame. And the issue is extending plays. What are you going to do feeling pressure, right? How much can you create on your own, which is really the separating characteristic of the modern quarterback. Mahomes, Josh Allen, Herbert, uh, Jalen Hurts to an extent, even Joe Burrow a little bit. Like, make the indefensible play after the defense has had the perfect coverage or immediate pass rush. I think Penix lacks there compared to Jane Daniels and Drake May and certainly Caleb Williams. Uh, the health concerns, I'm with you guys. Like, how many more seasons do we need to go and say – yeah, he's, he played another whole season. What do you want? Um, I don't think last year is probably representative of what he'll do in the NFL, again, given the surrounding talent, which mm -hmm. people want to knock Jane Daniels. I understand that. But I, I just think it was a perfect situation. It was an excellent team. He played great. It's just I think he's rightfully a tier below these guys. But look, if you have 23 and you got your left tackle, Mazel Tov. All right, Catholic, do you have a trade? Because we have not had any chance to beat. I guess you guys could have uh, – or we could have vetoed earlier. Are we going to have All right. any vetoed? Oh, I, I still get to sneak in 34, though. I never snuck oh. in 34. I, that was my <laughs> extra pick. Sorry. You out of here in like 15 minutes. I know. <laughs> no, it's all good. I'm, it's all good. No, no rush. All good. Um, okay. I would like to uh, – I'll make this one real quick. The Patriots the, finally get a chance here at 34th overall. I was very tempted, believe it or not, to again choose chaos and make a very unpopular pick. I love that Braden Fisk kid, the defensive lineman out of Florida State. Mm -hmm. He oh. had a – he was dynamite at the Combine. And I think he's going to be wildly disruptive. He may jump up to the top of somebody's second round. And why not? Again, it's sort of like that's why I would have gone for Legereus Sneed and free, uh, not free agency, yes. but I would have made the trade. It's like, oh, uh, you get you get one of the top five cornerbacks in the NFL to come on. He's worth $19 million a year, and you've got the money. I think the Patriots completely whiffed there. But I'm not passing up a chance to get my Debo Samuel after five years ago. The Patriots whiffed on getting their Debo Samuel. 34th overall. It's a bit of a reach. Give me Xavier Leggett out of the University of South Carolina. Hopefully he becomes your true wide receiver one. Kid's a natural born playmaker. Catholic just made the face of shit. I have to scratch off my top box. Yep. Here. So, <laughs> all right. So he was actually, he was option two because I need to clarify. Can I trade my pick for a current player? Yeah. All right. Ooh. Then I am well, we'll trading. See. We'll see what the, we'll see who the player is. Okay. Pick 34 for Brandon Ayuk from the San Francisco 49ers. I want him. I want to pay him. Give me Brandon Ayuk for pick 34. Straight up. Nothing added. You know what? I'll negotiate. If you guys say no, I'll even throw in a future pick if I have to. But so I want Brandon there Ayuk. will be no negotiation. There will be one question for me, and then Fitzy and I are going to confirm in front of your face and render a decision. Okay. Is a second round pick. All that you want to offer for Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll throw in a 2025 fourth. That's the that's the offer. I, th I think I'm saying, I'm saying no. I think oh. that, really, I was going to say you could put that through the Callahan trade machine. Here's the thing: I think you the 49ers say John Lynch. You I, can't afford him. You have too okay, many players here's, on that payroll. No, that's you're right. But here's the thing: between Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. 
I think they trade Debo because I think Debo is more susceptible to injuries. I think I think Ayuk has uh, blossomed and shown them exactly why they need him. And while you don't exactly find or Debo's don't grow on trees, even though I just said I wanted to find the next Debo Samuel with Xavier Leggett, I think they would move on from Debo first. Um, I, 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 I'm keeping Ayuk if I'm them. Like the- he's got more tread in his tires too, but he's more expensive, so the cost is going to be a little bit lower than Ayuk. So I, I just think down. the Niners are going. Give right. us a first round pick, or that's it. Like it's the Jimmy G trade talks from three years ago. Uh, it was uh, I'm trying to remember the pick that they got. It took Kinlaw, Javon Kinlaw, a couple of years mm-hmm. ago to South Carolina to replace their right. defensive tackle. DeForest Buckner. They trade DeForest Buckner, get a right. first round pick in return, take Kinlaw. I think they look at this and go, we really want to keep him. We'll jump through all of the salary cap ah. gymnastics. Uh, so apologies. You, you've been vetoed. Right. But it's it's not a bad idea. I just think if, if the Patriots are going to get him for 34, the Chiefs are like, well, we have 32. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my all God. Right, fine. You Shut down. Imagine him there. That's, Holy smokes. No, that would stink. All right. Why then I'm going left? boring. I'm going basic. Give me my anchor at left tackle. Give me Jordan Morgan. I don't care about the arms like you said. Great player. Uh, Arizona and just put him. He's my left tackle. Maybe to start the season. Maybe we have to uh, reel him in and uh, you know sort of ease him into the process. But you have guys here right now for it. But give me Jordan Morgan. Make it basic. Protect Drake May for the next ten years. Uh, so give me Jordan Morgan as the left tackle for pick thirty-four. Thoughts, oh, Pitsy? Fine pick. Safe pick. I mean, it would have been a lot better if it was Brandon Ayuk, I guess. But I'll yeah. take Jordan Morgan. <laughs> Uh, so I, I like the pick. I think it's fine. I think Jordan Morgan, I again said earlier this mm-hmm. week, I think his tape coming off an ACL last year is, was not as good as it could have been obviously mm-hmm. without the injury. So what you're looking right. for projecting here in 2024, you take the injury to account, but if you bump up that right. film a little bit, he's an early second round pick who probably goes mm-hmm. in the first now. And when you look specifically against their game against UCLA, uh, Leite Latu, UCLA edge defender, mm-hmm. who is an analytics darling going to go in the middle of the first round. He held his own pretty well anchoring against him, you know, which you need to with those short arms. Um, again, that's a small sample, but it's an excellent player as far as his draft class goes. And I think it's uh, I think it's a fine pick. All right, you lead us off. Number 68, who you got? All right, so um, there is a lot of volatility with this guy um, as far as where he lands. So am I going to be able to get Jalen Polk out of Washington at pick 68, fellas? Yeah, that's a, okay. I feel like I feel like one of the two – Washington receivers is going to be available at 68. All right. And I well, like, them, I'm going to and I like them both. All right. Then I'm going to go with the, the with the Polk Jalen. I'm going to go Jalen Polk. Uh, outside receiver. Go up and get it guy. Uh, can do can do a lot of things, but was one of the two 1,000 yard receivers with Michael Penix Jr. at Washington this season. Uh, I wasn't able to get my guy at 34, my future number one in Brandon Ayuk. So I take a shot at 68 with Jalen Polk. Uh, again, good player, a guy who can change your offense probably almost instantly. Um, because you, you just need it with this team. There's a lot of, you know, twos and threes, but give me a guy who can be a future one. So Jalen Polk is pick 68. All solid. right. Solid pick. Solid pick. I hope, I mean, listen, that they, the time may tell that all of these quarterbacks, except for Drake may benefited from having a load of pro receivers. You know, you could have three guys go from Washington within the first two to three right. rounds as well. You could have, you got at least two going from LSU as well. So, um, yeah, I, I, you don't go wrong either way with me. I mean, it was Jalen McMillan in 2022. It was a Dunze and Polk in 2023. Mm-hmm. So solid pick. Well, t- tell me if I'm wrong about this, because I, I mentioned it as some people knock Jaden Daniels and they knock Michael Penix for having right. great teammates. And that's true. People do that. I think it's bad framing. Like it's outside of their control who Washington recruited and put next to them. Right. Yep. And if anything, you're a quarterback. Everyone talks about this. Your job is to make them better. So, yes, you need to keep that in mind and contextualize all of these evaluations. Who are you playing with? Who are you playing against? What was the weather? Yada, yada. Are you injured? But we can separate that as best we can and understand that's not a bad thing that you play with great players. If anything, right. it tells me how you will benefit and play when we ideally surround you with great players in the future. It's just understanding that Drake may probably suck a little bit more than he should have because his receivers were bad. And Jane Daniels won the Heisman running away when he might have just won it normally. Had he not been with Malik Davis? Well, you also knock a guy like um, like Mac Jones, right, at Alabama for having three studs at the wide receiver position, and then he doesn't translate in the NFL because his talent wasn't as good. But Joe Burrow had um, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase at LSU, and he's still nasty in the NFL, right? And so 
it could happen. It could translate with Penix. It might not. The same thing with Jaden Daniels. It's a case by case basis. So I find it hard to to, to completely knock these guys for having talent yeah, on he, their team. It's not easy to isolate all the skill set, right? Like Joe Burrow's right. had a better arm. He's more creative. Like he, he's of just course. better than Mac was relating to pressure. But the idea of like, oh well, yeah, of course he was good. He played with all these great receivers. Like I don't right. know. You hang in third and six at SEC at Auburn in the fourth quarter when you're losing as a favorite and see how you right. do and not pee down your legs. These guys held in. So anyway, uh, Fitzy, number sixty-eight. Are we? You cannot take. Uh, Jalen Polk, you can trade up, you can trade down, you can take another player. This is probably where you're expecting me to grab my guy, Javon Baker, because so, you know I am the leader of the Javon Baker Appreciation Society. Um, I I want to take, uh, I want to take, but I know he's not going to be there because he's going to get overdrafted in the second round by Jim Harbaugh, but you know what the hell with it. I'm going to take Blake Corum running back out of the University of Michigan. Oh, all uh, right. Just in case, just in case he's there. Look, you don't score 20 some odd touchdowns. And yes, I understand you ran behind an NFL quality offensive line. This kid is tough as nails, has a nose for the end zone, doesn't mind taking a beating at the line of scrimmage, can still kick it to the outside. And when you put up as many 225 pound bench presses as the tackle that's going to go first overall in the draft, I will take that kind of strength. That means you're not going to take any S from the rest of the ACE. So. Yeah, I would I mean, love uh, to see this kid. Anyone I, can do that with the strength coaches in Michigan. I mean, anyone can produce with those elite coaches. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's not oh, that yeah, big yeah. Deal. He was, yeah, it's because he was drinking all that fair life milk there with Harbaugh. Yeah. I love, yeah. I've, 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 I mean, I've got Michigan in the family. I've watched a kid for years. I'm a huge fan. Um, and I would just, I don't know if Ramondre is going to resign. I mean, we got Gibson for a couple of years, but tell me this for anyone's like, well, we got Gibson and Mondre. We got other needs. How can you, anyone that it just can score the football? That's all I want. Leggett can score all over the place because you can use him in multi and a number of ways at wide receiver. Corum, you can do a ton with as well. I need positional versatility. And Callahan, Cadillac, I need people that are just going to maybe, just maybe keep opposing defensive coordinators up at night or at least make them second guess what the Patriots are going to do. He's just a gamer. He's just a really good football player. And that's what you need here. You need to add talent anywhere you can. Good football players. 68 may be a little high, but again, you don't know when the run on running backs is going to start. Start. So maybe you have to take him at 68. I'm fine with it. It's Running back is a sneaky need, too. Ramondre is going into a contract year. Uh, Gibson is not going to be a bell cow. So you need you need to add to that you know portion of the roster. So I like Blake Corum here, too. It's a little high for my liking, mm -hmm. but I get the love for Blake Corm. I mean, the contact sure. balance is absurd. Like, you're just not yep. knocking that dude over unless you're no. bringing all of your weight all at the same time. I worry about the tread and his tires. Uh, and I want to see yeah. him a little bit more pass catcher, but, like, the measurables are there. The level of competition, all that different stuff. Like, you're not worried about him getting low enough or sticking his nose in on third and one or at the goal line. Like, he he's a pretty well-rounded runner. Uh, mm -hmm. My pick is going to be the obvious one, Patrick Paul, offensive tackle at Houston. He's a little high cut. You're banking on the athleticism at this point. He, you know, was not uh, a shutdown pass protector. And I don't think he's a road grader, road grader in the run game. But there are enough traits here, again, in the third round where someone's going to have a hole in their game. I'm banking Scott Peters gets that dog out of him. Because, again, this is not necessarily Scott Peters' pick for the little that I know about Scott Peters, who I know was putting his hands on guys in the meeting rooms. And kind of wrestling with them when they met at the combine, right? Like, I don't know how Patrick Paul liked that if they met. But the point is here, develop him, work on that, get the grit in there mm -hmm. down to down to down. Because I just think for the guys left, like Blake Fisher was right tackle at Notre Dame, mm -hmm. um, you know, might right. be able to play the other side. He's fine. Maybe you can get him in the fourth round. For me, my picks, and we'll recap here and then speed through the fourth round, uh, Jane Daniels, Lab McConkey, Patrick Paul. You know, mostly big school guys. I, I just think it makes too much sense not to take him here. Uh, any objections? No, that's chalk, I like man. It. That's a solid pick. I mean, he could turn into a plus-level starter, and the Patriots have had a lot of luck with tackles in the last 20 years going in the second round with a kid from Purdue named Matty Light and a kid from Houston uh, by the name of uh, Sebastian Boma. So good on you. All right, I just read down my draft. Uh, recap uh, yours, Fitzy, and then Cadillac. Uh, okay, I had at 11, Olu Fashanu and 23, Michael Penix, because I traded out of third overall, and I'm still carrying a first into next year, but I don't get to use it today. 34th overall, wide receiver Xavier Leggett out of the University of South Carolina, go Cox, and 68th overall, running back Blake Corum from Michigan, go Blue. Pick three, Drake May, chalk as ever. Uh, 
34, Jordan Morgan tried to get Ayuk. The guys didn't let it happen. Uh, and then pick 68, Jalen Polk, wide receiver out of Washington. So we hit on the top three needs with the top three picks. Excellent. All right, leading off the fourth round, I have uh, FSU cornerback Jerry and Jones. He's a guy who's sticky enough in man-to-man. I think the level of competition is encouraging. Measurables are there. Again, you're talking about fourth round picks. There are no perfect prospects anywhere, which I think people yep. forget, especially when we talk about quarterbacks and at the top of the draft, but especially at any other position at the start of day three. Uh, what's interesting to me is how much they might maneuver in this area because it's consensus that the players in the sixth and seventh rounds are going to be lower caliber than past years because those players just stayed in college, made more NIL money, and developed. So I think the Patriots might make multiple picks here. But if they make one, I would like to see Jerry and Jones a corner at FSU. Cornerbacks Fair enough. Eight. I like it. Bitsy. All right. Uh, I am going to address one final need on the New England Patriots. It's funny because you would have thought this would have been a position of great depth, but you've got one guy on a transition tag who's unhappy. You've got another great cornerback, a great safety that retired. I don't know what they're going to be doing with Marte Mapu. And as much as I love all of these bringing the thunder violence for breakfast, box safety linebacker hybrid type of guys, I'm going to need somebody that can just roam the backfield. So I'm going to go for some place you don't usually think of for defense. I'm going to go with Dadrian Taylor Demerson safety out of Texas tech with pick one Oh two, because the Patriots could use a little extra back end help, something that they didn't address in free agency. So now we go in the draft. Texas yep. Tech's defensive backs, I don't think have violence for breakfast. I think they have burnt toast and stare at it and go, this <laughs> be a mirror. Uh, but that's that's good. I think it's you know a point that's been missed. They need a traditional free safety, someone who can roam yeah. back there, like unlock Straight all up. of the coverage in there that they have with Devin uh, here for years and years. All right, Cadillac, finish this off. Yeah, we're all on the same page as far as the fourth rounder being a defensive back uh, because cornerback is another sneaky need here. Yeah, you have Gonzalez on one side, but – Things really collapsed last season with, you know, the Jack Jones, J.C. Jackson stuff. And then um, Marcus Jones gets hurt and, you know, he's still you don't know what he is. Right. And so uh, I'm taking another corner and I'm taking Cam Hart out of Notre Dame. He is six two. He is 200 pounds. Um, you mentioned Sticky uh, from your guy, Andrew. He is the same here uh, in Cam Hart. He hasn't picked off a ball since 2021. Uh, so a little bit of maybe a red flag, but also that's just because he's a lockdown corner. He can play on the outside. Uh from watching him, his play recognition is phenomenal. Like he just has the instincts. And I think that's just from being, you know, a veteran uh, in South Bend for a while. So I'm taking Cam Hart, cornerback out of Notre Dame. Solid pick. Very nice. All right. We are not going to go any further because uh, we like to keep our listeners around here. Um, we will go deeper into the fifth and sixth and seventh rounds. I do want to wrap up really quickly. One bold uh, draft prediction from you both. It could be related to something we said, completely unrelated. And then Fitzy uh, make a pitch for Pats and Pines, which I talked about in this podcast, but it's coming up on April 18th. Absolutely. Mike, you Mike, you go first. I love your, your right. yours are the hottest um, of hot takes. My bold prediction is something that I tried to do, and I'm still bitter about getting shut down for it. The Patriots on draft weekend make a trade for a bona fide number one wide receiver, whether it be T. Higgins, whether it be Brandon Ayuk. They make something happen, and they get the true number one for Drake May. Uh, with that they take with the number three pick. So go get your bona fide number one. I like it in that I think the price came down for those guys based on the Diggs trade. Now, Stefan Diggs, people forget, yep. quietly kind of faded in the back end of last season. But, like, if that's all it took from Houston and there were some swaps in there, but it didn't get to a first-round pick, it wasn't a clean first-round pick, like, that that seemed a little bit more reasonable to me today than it did yesterday. Yep. Okay. I could party with that. Uh, my, my Number bold take does not excite you. Yeah. Not, yeah, I, right. I, yeah. I would love one. Yeah, I'd love I, can one. Deal, I, I guess <laughs> when's the last time we had one, a 2018 Gronk, my God. And that You're was just not letting yourself believe you are, uh, Richmond, you know, FC Richmond before Ted Lasso got there. It's the hope yep. that kills you. Yeah, I know. I need to go tap the believe sign I have hanging over there at the top of my, <laughs> on the way out of my door as well. Uh, yes. all right. My bold prediction is the new England Patriots realizing that they lack both offensive line and w offensive line tackle one and wide receiver one depth trade back into the first round. They will likely take Drake May third overall. And I think that they're going to identify a guy, whether it's a tackle or a wide receiver, I can't predict which, but I think that they end up making two selections in the first round. They trade 34 overall, maybe mortgage a fourth this year or next year 
to just move up a couple spots and get the guy that they identify as either the wall or the way uh, on draft night. So Pats fans may need to stay up very late on April 25th. Uh, and I think she'll walk away very, very happy. That is out of two music to the newspaper reporter who needs to file on deadline. But that is sweet, sweet symphony to every other part of me because it just has to happen. I said this two months ago. I was like, yeah, but this sounds good. It makes Do sense. It. I get closer and I can't build the trade just yet. But hey, it's not my job. This is what they pay Elliot Wolf much more yeah. than I get from the Boston Herald to make these kind of trades. Go make it, Elliot Wolf. Patrick Stewart, make it happen, baby. Matt Crow, get on the phone. Ravens at 30. I like that. I think that's my favorite spot for them. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All Thank right. You Pats and Pites, April 18th. It's going to be down at Vitamin C Brewery. Fitz will be there. I will be there. Another Patriots panel. Come down, hang out with us, drink beer, ask questions. All the money goes to Boston Children's Hospital. What have I missed here for the folks who want to come down to Weymouth? It'll be our second event. I think this is going to be the best one yet. What do you, what do you think? I think it's going to be great. Last year, we had a little bit of a just plain mirthful celebration because we had a beer release for me and my buddy Georgie after years of making goofy YouTube videos. And while I still want to bring the same sort of camaraderie and light tone to the evening as well, um, you know, what happened with our with a, what happened with our friend and your colleague at the Herald? Um, we we can't fix that and we don't have the brains and the capacity to put an end to the cowardice of cancer. But what we are really good at doing is uniting in Patriots Nation to get together, talk football, drink beers, and help the heroes that will hopefully stop things like that from ever happening again. So uh, you'll have Cadillac there. You'll be there. I'll be there. Hopefully we'll have Giardi. We'll have uh, Nick Cattles. Field Yates from ESPN has been kind enough to agree to join the party. Doug Kide will obviously be there. We'll have Greg, Jerry Thornton from Barstool and hopefully a host of other people. Just come mill about with us. Then we'll do a draft panel. You get, you get to ask all the questions you want, and the answer is no. We don't know why Malcolm Butler was benched, but yes, for $20, you get a world-class beer and a great night a week before the draft. And you yeah, can get all tickets. The money going to a great cause. Yep. Yes, go indeed, ahead. to help the heroes at Boston Children's. You can just go to my socials at FitzEGFY for information on how to purchase tickets April 18th, 7 p.m. at Vitamin C. Yeah, and we'll be retweeting uh, this week, next week, leading up to the event. Tickets are $20. Please come hang out, drink beer, talk football. It'll be one week from the draft. Right now, we are two weeks away from that, fellas. This was outstanding. Thank you for the first annual Patriots mock draft. Snake draft, I think we crossed it, but of course, we'll have to wait two years to see how yep. all of our uh, prospects <laughs> did. Uh, Fitz, you got to go. Thank you, Cadillac. And yeah, I'll see you guys it. soon, all right? Hey, Later. as Thanks always, for us. go Pats. Thanks for having us, buddy. All right, back to the best coast. For our male fan of the week, we bring in Gary Langley from Culver City. Though Gary, as I was just chatting with uh, off air, comes back east about six weeks. Danvers native, wife is from Albany. And the Patriots, wherever he is, are still very much in his heart. And right now on his mind is the idea of playing the kids, which we know Elliot Wolf wants to do. And Gary, you uh, are the dad of a newborn. Congratulations again. You have kids also set everywhere. the record. Not a newborn? No, kids everywhere. We're playing the kids. We've got kids. <laughs> Yeah, excellent point by you. That's good. I, I really should have let off with that. Forget the geography. Let's just get to, you know, the most obvious tie-in here. Dad of a newborn and the Patriots uh, feel like they're going to play a lot of newborns. But um, you might have set the record for longest fan email I've ever received. And I appreciate the thought that went into that. But this segment is going to have to still be eight minutes. And so I said, okay, when we do this segment, we'll pick one. It revolves around possible juju trade and play me young kids. And so there's no real question here. Let's Let's mix this up. Why don't you lead off? with what you're, you was most on the top of your mind as far as this topic goes, Juju, and then trying to get the kids in next season to see what the Patriots have. Yeah, so I think Juju and playing the kids are linked, right? So if you're going to play the kids and you're going to stay committed to that idea, there's certain players on the roster who are now even more expendable than they originally were. And Juju falls on that list, and Kyle Duggar falls on that list. But focusing on Juju, you're talking about a, a wide receiver room that has Osborne, Born and Pop Douglas, no questions asked. And then presuming they may go one or two receivers in the draft, you're already putting Juju as the sixth receiver on the depth chart, and we haven't even talked about Tyquan or Jalen Rager yet. So if you are going to stay committed to the playing the kids mantra, then you need to consider doing something with Juju. And I know we all want him gone, and he hasn't his on-the-field performance hasn't really helped his cause there. But before we get into moving him, he does deserve credit for, remember, one receiver lost the game probably in Oakland, or excuse me, in Vegas, and said, that ball didn't really touch my hands, maybe my fingers. And then a few weeks later, Juju has the pass go through his hands against the commanders, and he immediately says, on me, I lost the game. So credit to that guy for first being somebody who 
is willing to voice his own uh, shortcomings. So that's why I'm not immediately jumping at it that I want him gone like Devontae Parker, for instance. But what you want is a is a soft landing. Like they can both go. You just want one guy to land softly and on his feet and bend his knees, and the other one you're like, yeah, best of luck to you. No, no question. Yeah. And I think in that case, I'm going to to Juju and his agent and saying, listen, it didn't work here. It's not going to work here. I know you're still under contract. Tell you what, go out there and find a trade partner, some sort of contender maybe who is willing to bring you back on, rehab you, and do what you can in a smaller uh, position to perform next year and tell you what, go find every team, whether they have cap space or not, because I think one thing the Patriots can do is use their cap space. They didn't do it for players. Maybe they can do it for picks. So the Brock Osweiler type concept where that team almost bought a draft pick. Juju has 7 million guaranteed this upcoming year. I'll leave it to Pat's cap and experts like yourself to figure out the nuances of it. But the, the matter being, if you pay somebody for their, um, you can lower their cap hit to the trading team. So I'm right. trying and to find a way. Let's jump to in there, too, because there is a, a de-escalation as far as how significant the cap hit needs to be, right? Depending on whether he's cut or, as you suggest, a trade. Uh, Doug and I touched upon this in the last episode saying, look, if you're going to trade Juju Smith-Schuster, you're not acquiring a draft pick. Or if you are, it's some sort of swap where you're giving the better pick attached to Juju just to get off his contract. At this point, to the point that you're making, use your space just to absorb crap. Like fill it, take take your lumps now, swallow them, and move on because you're not you're not using that space on good players. I would argue just for releasing him. Now there are some differences, and this is just all accounting rules. We don't need to get into the specifics, but the bottom line is this: if he is cut or traded before June first, the pain is is deeper than it will be after June first. And here are the numbers: if he is cut before June first, outright. Uh, they lose cap space and take a $12.2 uh, million dollar cap, a dead cap hit. If they cut him after June 1st, it is a $9.6 million cap hit, and there's no loss of space. It's negligible. If they trade him before June 1st, only $5.2 million in dead cap and about 5 or so million in cap space. If they trade him after June 1st, it's $2.6 million in dead cap. Now, that's a $10 million difference. Cutting him now versus trading him later, again, after June 1st, but at the cost of an extra draft pick, which for a rebuilding team, I just don't think is going to be palatable for the front office. Absolutely. Take the hits now. Take the lumps in this year. Preserve as much cap flexibility as you can next year. But the, the focus here is trying to do right by the player, but more importantly, creating playing opportunities for the younger guys that you are committed to playing. And All right. That Speaking means Juju leaves, Juju leaves. Speaking of the young kids, I want your, your top five. They could be in any order. Uh, or not ordered at all, it's like, I want to see these young kids play. And even if they have growing pains, even if they fumble week two against the Dolphins, keep them on the field. And I want to know what you have in them by the end of the season. Who are those five young players here? First, are really going to be second, third, maybe in some cases, fourth year players. Yeah. So Christian Gonzalez and Pop Douglas are the two. It's just like, please, please, please stay healthy. Like, just let, let us just get six to 17 games and see what they can do uh, next year. The third is Keon White, and Dietrich Wise kind of falls into that same sort of veteran, let's move him off to the side and let's have promote playing the kids. And Wise isn't on that same list as Juju because, A, he's a team leader, he's a captain, and by all accounts is a mentor type. So you almost want him to be in that percent role for Keon White. But Keon White needs to play, so he's probably the third. Um, give me one of the four interior linemen, Sal, Mafi, Strange, or Andrews to be a legitimate starter on the interior line. I still think there's a Boston media cover-up that Cole Strange is more hurt or is going to take longer to come back next year than, than is being uh, let on, but I'm going to leave that for another time. And uh, my biggest sleeper, you had Tyquan Thornton as your, in your column as your sleeper. I'm going to go even deeper, and maybe this doesn't count because they didn't draft him, but he's still a young player, and that's Alex Austin. I like that. Came in in November, had a really up, you know, a strong final five games, had one pick on a great uh, play, peeling off the receiver and, and um, high pointing a Josh Allen pass. You should have had another one against the Steelers. But if you're wanting to, if you're concerned about Marcus Jones and Jonathan Jones being smaller, Alex Austin's 6'1. He can play opposite on the boundary with Christian Gonzalez. 
You may even be now able to move Jonathan Jones to a free safety type role if you don't bring somebody else in. But if the season starts tomorrow, Alex Austin's probably your starting cornerback. And it's trying to give him so, an opportunity. Jo Jonathan Jones is going to have a say about that. Um, but he's also someone that I think at this point in his career is probably best served as a utility guy, right? Can play nickel outside, maybe even single line deep safety, which they've been reluctant to do, uh, at least as of the last couple of years. But I, I would throw in Marcus Jones in there too, right? You know, we're talking about these third year players. Cole Strange is, is, is going to start. I mean, if he's just unhealthy next year, it's, it's incredibly unfortunate. Uh, also, if we're going to fill our own time, it's going to be with quarterback rumors, not left guard injury <laughs> cover-ups here in the Boston media. And we do get bored. I, mean, I wrote about this a lot today in my column, but the point is, uh, I, I, if I have more information, I would share it. In the time I tried to share it on the pod, I think a few months ago, I screwed it up. So I'm just going to cold stop here in the Cole Strange run. But the point is, Strange gets a lot of attention. Tyquan Thornton gets a lot of attention. And Marcus Jones is a third-year player taken to the third round. Like, Miles Bryant walked not because Pat's Nation pushed him off the plank, but because they believe in Marcus Jones. They only had so many small corners, and he plays the same position. It's going to be nickel. He can rot back, rotate back into safety occasionally, and you can flip between these three corner and three safety looks within the same personnel groupings because he's the keystone to that, the little tiny 5-8 keystone. Uh, but I think he's a more natural playmaker than either of those two guys. And that's someone that I don't want people to forget about, Marcus Jones, in addition to being an excellent return man. Uh, I like the picks about Keon White. Dietrich Wise is also productive enough in my mind. Like, he's not wowing anyone. Uh, and Antonio Maffi of the three, four interior guys, because honestly, when you said Andrews, I was like, you know David Andrews is on the other side of 30, right? Oh, no, you're talking about Jake Andrews. Man, most of the super media, forget about fourth-round pick at a Troy. Maffi because his college career started late on the offensive side, I still think has more potential than the guy we saw getting his butt kicked early in the season, thrust into a role he wasn't ready for. That year two leap, as much as no one's going to be zeroed in, binoculars ready at training camp for year two guys, I think deserves some more attention because Sal finished strong. If he can push strange or at least give good depth at right guard, like you got a solid interior because of those picks last year between Sal and Mafia. No question. City Sal was drafted when he was 25. Mafi, I think, was two and a half or even three years younger. And like you said, converted defensive lineman over to offensive lineman. Opportunities need to be made. The only way to do that is to put him on the field. And you've got four that you've drafted in the last two years. And you've got two spots that are available to them. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we get you out of here? It sounds like you got a sweet gig at home. I was taking the overnight shift with the baby. So you're you're free in the daytime. You use, use your daytime uh, to your best use, my friend. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I am so appreciative of what you're doing with Boston Children's Hospital and making this available to fans. So I wanted to carry that spirit on. My wife and I have two Airbnbs in the Bridgeton uh, main area. For those familiar, it's by Pleasant Mountain. Uh, I used to go by Shawnee Peak. And uh, we have two properties there, both with hot tubs, both in kind of remote areas. And again, would like to make that uh, gratuitous spirit stay alive here with the Pat's Interference podcast and make available to your listeners a 12% discount between now and uh, leading up to Memorial Day weekend if they mention this podcast and then they show proof of donation to Boston Children's Hospital. And uh, all they could do is reach out to me or yourself and get that worked out and uh, happy to share the links for the two Airbnbs so that your listeners can see them. But yeah, any stay where well, we're open on the calendar between now and right before Memorial Day, 12% discount on whatever the listing price is. If they can just show to you proof of, or myself, proof of uh, donation to Boston Children's Hospital and they mention the Pat's Interference podcast. This is too cool. This is, look, I've done TV, I've done radio. This is among the coolest things you've done to carry on that spirit. And it's not because, as I told you beforehand, that I've you know spent summers or a week or two in Bridgeton uh, on Moose Pond in Denmark. Lovely area. Like some of the best summers I ever had as a kid. But this is what it's all about. Pass it on. Put your own spin on it. And thank you for doing that. 12% discount. Not bad also as we approach Tom Brady's induction of the Patriots Hall of Fame coming up in June. It's, Had to make uh, it a connection. Yeah, had to make the connection. All right, that is Gary Langley. You can find him, Gary, spelled as you'd expect. Then L-A-N-G-L-I-A-I-S, L-A-I-S to finish. Langley, thank you very much for your feedback, your emails. I know I'm going to hear from you again, and I think we'll probably have you back on the pod, all right? Yes, and uh, as the self-claimed press secretary of the uh, President Tommy Curran trade down team, uh, you'll probably be hearing a lot more about my preference to trade down over the next few weeks. 
Oh, no. Just keep it in the emails. I hear enough from my guy, Tommy. Random texts about this. We can't have two of you. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Andrew.